signal for kickoff. Valpo will possess to start the game, and an immediate long ball down, and it goes out across the end line. Yeah, and Valparaiso really needs to try to win that possession battle today. We'll be talking about that throughout today's broadcast, Aaron. It's really important for them, especially against an explosive team like Missouri State. We'll touch more on their exact stats here in a few moments as well and how much they have really dominated this year. For Missouri State, I mean, just staying the course is everything for them right now in this one. Remaining aggressive on defense, doing what they've done all season long, following that formula of great defense, translating into great transition offense. And then Valparaiso, they've been plagued by slow starts throughout this season. And once again, that's going to be something to watch today for them. they got to avoid that in this game, Aaron. You mentioned the uh, the slow start the first time these two teams met. The Bears scored two goals in the first nine minutes of the game, put Valpo behind the eight ball early on as Missouri State, you see Adna Gickling, Bruseth there, bringing it down. Battle in midfield, DeMar Rose trying to win it for the Crusaders, but Connor Langan takes it back for the Bears. You mentioned their defense. How strong is their defense? Well, three of their starting backs have been Missouri Valley Conference Defensive Players of the Week this year. Really impressive feed, and they get a key piece back today. Uh, ben Stroud in the back line. Center back missed two matches, came off the bench last time out, and ruled fit to start today. So a big big piece of their defensive prowess. Yeah, and I mean, how fierce is it exactly? They ranked sixth in the nation so far in goals against average. They're averaging giving up just under half a goal per match in this season. I mean, that is just remarkable. Yeah, they have not allowed more than one goal in a game this year. They've trailed just three times all year. So you see them get set up and winning the 50-50 uh, ball on the free kick. Molotero brings it up and now cross into the attacking third, making a run. Wilkin with his lead pass, however, too far ahead. Ed Edwin Holst there for Valpo to corral it. And can't say enough about what he's been able to do this year. Valparaiso's defense has been uncharacteristically weak this season at times. They've struggled a little bit. And Mike Avery, the head coach, really preaches about strong defense. He's, he has seen nine of the top ten seasons defensively for this Valparaiso program historically. Josh Dolling on the ball now for Missouri State tries to go out wide. But Dylan Wagaman making his first appearance for Valpo after missing the last three matches. Out there at left back and won it back, but now the Bears possess back in their defensive third. Ball at midfield, a little 50-50 action there. Won by Missouri State. They look to press forward here with the numbers as we're three minutes into the game. Wilkin looking to go out right to Bruseth, but again a little too far out in front, and Holst is there to give Valpo possession. And you can just get the feeling that it's going to be a busy afternoon for Edvin Holst in this one. And he's really been, as I said, sensational in this season, very busy. The most saves in the conference for him on the year. He's got 58 of Valparaiso's 76 saves. So I think that just tells the story right there. This is Valpo's first home match in nearly a month, October 1st against Bradley. The last time the team took to Brownfield. 10 of their first 14 matches of the year have been on the road, so happy to be back at home for two of the final three of the regular season as they looked around into form for the conference tournament. And head coach Mike Avery even talked about that yesterday, Aaron, about how the importance of staying strong through such a long road stand like that, going on the road for almost the better part of the whole month since October 1st. That was their last home game, and now I mean, obviously, we're all, all the way to Halloween almost tomorrow, so that about says it all. It takes a toll on a team after a while. Missouri State looking to play out of the back. Michael Creek, their goalie, has been strong all year, seventh in the nation in goals against average. As I mentioned, no more than one goal allowed in any match this season. I mean, yeah, you can't take away anything that he's been able to do. Redshirt Jr. out of St. Louis, Missouri, right near the Missouri State confines, if you will. He struggled a bit more comparatively speaking as of late, though, um, giving up at least one goal in the last three matches consecutively after being just very strong in the first nine of the season. Valpo's service into the box headed around by Jack Eaton, but the Bears possess as DeMar Rose had won a foul about 40 yards from goal to give Valpo that, uh, that set-piece opportunity. 
be Missouri State throw down by the corner flag as Valpo tries to keep the Bears pressed in here just past five minutes into this match between Valpo and Missouri State this afternoon. Talking at the top two about all of our keys to win, and we talked about uh, possession, winning the possession battle, and so far it's kind of been back and forth, these two teams feeling each other out, a couple opportunities in each other's ends of the field, and it's just going to be so important for this Valparaiso squad if they want to have a chance at any kind of upset in this one to control the ball. I mean, it's that simple. Well, and also a formation adjustment today as you see a ball down the left side for Missouri State. Run down out there, now cutting back into the box. Headed out nicely there by Chavez Brooks to eliminate a potential dangerous chance as they attempt to counter. But the formation shift for Valpo today, going to basically a five-man back line this afternoon. Via Lobos and kind of a sweeper position behind the back four, um, trying to limit the damage that Matthew Bentley and Josh Dolling, the two Missouri State strikers, can do. We mentioned their defense, but Missouri State's offense has been no slouch this year either. No, they really haven't been. I mean, they are at the top of the conference in almost every statistical category so far, Aaron, as you mentioned. And it's really ironic. You don't often see a team that's ranked so highly in the nation on offense and then at the top of the conference as well on the other side. Dolling on the ball now for Missouri State, playing in the midfield. Now gets it over to Denton, but DeMar Rose doing good work in the midfield so far. Won that ball back, and they get it out wide to Don Garcia in some space on the left flank. Looks to play the overlap to Madondo. Madondo down in the left corner, waiting for numbers to get in the box. Now he'll go back to Garcia. And Crusaders bring it back out, bring it all the way back to the back line. This is what it's all about, just being patient. Is now, just as I say that, the broadcaster's jinx hits with a turnover. Bruce, uh, midfielder for Missouri State, with the intercept and now possessing for the Bears. Bears 13-0-0, 7-0-0 in Missouri Valley Conference play. and you can go down the list of accolades for them so far this year. They've broken the school record winning streak. Um, they're one of just three teams in the nation without a loss. And they're top 10 in the nation, number 9 in the United Soccer Coaches poll, also top 15 in a couple other polls coming into today. The fourth time they've been ranked in the top 10 in program history, all of which have come under the guidance of head coach John Leamy in his 28th season for the Bears. Bentley, the on the attack, gets it taken away. Now Connor Langan steps up from his back position. Valpo trying to win it back in their defensive third. Now Stuart Wilkin on the ball. Wilkin weaving his way through some Crusader defenders, but his shot is blocked by one of the Valpo backs, and Valpo is able to clear it away. Probably the most dangerous chance uh, in the opening nine minutes or so here so far. Definitely working the ball inside there with one of their best scorers with Matthew Bentley, as we mentioned him at the top, and you just never want him, if you're a Crusader, to be in that position in this game. Bruce Uth can't handle on the near touchline as it's out to Valpo. We've mentioned Bentley, the hot streak he's on, and it kind, kind of coincides with a bit of a stretch for the second striker, Josh Dolling, where he struggled a bit. Five goals in the first seven matches this year for Missouri State's number 10, but has not scored since September 26. He had the game-winning goal in each of their first four matches of the season, but has not found the back of the net in over a month. But it gets kind of covered up a bit when you have Bentley, who scored seven in the last five. Well, you know, and that's what makes this team so good is they've got so many different weapons that they can really use and go to in any given situation to score some offense for them or make a big play. 50-50 ball at midfield, won by Missouri State. Now trying to play up the left side. Ball bounces in the box, holst there for Valpo, I think. That's going to be a key, you know, holst in the back, not necessarily just making saves, but knowing when to come out and gather those long balls over the top. It looks like both teams trying to play that way here today. You know, with the weather conditions, sometimes handling the ball on the turf and making runs with it is tougher than just sending it up and go get it. Yeah, and it really does make a big difference. Viewers at home, it's hard to see 
how soggy and wet the field really is. It's been raining here for the better part of the last several hours. Cross effort there from Madondo gets blocked by Connor Langan. Ball goes out for a throw, it appears. And that's what makes this defense so good, as Mike Avery touched on as well. They go to a 4-4-2, a very inside strong defense, try to keep teams outside of the numbers there, and you see that that time it worked once again for them. Eaton on the throw gets headed out by Missouri State back, another cross in, and again, it's what, uh, what Valpo is looking to do, get the ball out wide and just send it in the box and try to make something happen there. We've seen a few crosses from them today, nothing has come to fruition yet as the Bears possess now into the midfield for Wilkin interesting decision there to go back with the ball I thought they had numbers there with that turnover they had a chance to maybe go on a counter but they decided to back the ball back up into their own backfield and kind of play it soft and patient the team's trading possession here in the early going 0-0 here at Brownfield between 9th-ranked Missouri State and Valparaiso. Missouri State looking to clinch the outright Valley regular season title. Winner a draw today is all it would take, and they've got more opportunities added after today as well. We mentioned uh, earlier they've trailed just three times all year, twice in Valley play. They trailed against Loyola for eight minutes and Bradley for 17 minutes, so 25 minutes within Valley Pitlay they've been trailing. They make sure they get out on the front foot and uh, and put the pressure on their opponents. Well, and it's evidenced by the last time these two teams played at Missouri State early in the season. The Bears got out to that 2-0 lead. It would have already been 2 nothing at this point, only 12 minutes in. Valpo throw coming up in the attacking third. So it's interesting to see in these attacking situations how much Valpo throws forward versus how they stay organized in the back. Flick on there from Dylan Wagaman, but nothing doing after that. Michael Creek comes out and handles it easily and turns away a potential Valpo chance. That was just a veteran play that time by Michael Creek. He saw one of Valpo's offensive players running in there towards the goal and wisely came out just a little bit to make the play. Foul called against Missouri State in the midfield. Looks like Jack Denton got a little too aggressive going up for a 50-50 header. That's something you don't really see a lot from this Bears team. They really don't commit a lot of fouls or cards towards the bottom of the conference in that category. Madondo trying to get around the edge. Unable to, but it gets deflected out by Connor Lang, and Valpo will learn the first corner kick of the afternoon. And this is what you got to do. Put yourself in position. These are more advantageous positions against a defense like this when you can get that ball right into the middle section without having to go through the heart of the defense via a corner. This is what you want if you're the Crusaders right here. It will be a Don Garcia lining up over the corner, the reigning Valley player of the week after a three-assist game two matches ago. Garcia with the right-footed boot. Into the box, headed on there, but just wide of the post. Looks like that was Dylan Wagaman on the header. Good effort there from Wagaman. Get a, get a pretty clean look at a header off a corner, but can't get it on frame. And we're still 0-0 here as we approach 14 minutes into this match. Yeah, that time you got the... the uh corner kick that you wanted really the ball was put right on point as you said to Wagaman Wagaman with a good opportunity there just unable to quite get the ball into where he needed to on the header but still a good effort pressure being put on Ben Stroud here by Adon Garcia we mentioned Stroud the key linchpin at center back for Missouri State missed two matches came off the bench last time out obviously ruled fit to start today is Molotero here for Missouri State, a little too far out in front for Dolling, and Holst takes it with ease. Yeah, Dolling was out in front there too, so he couldn't even really try to retrieve the ball. It would have been offsides anyway. But you see what Missouri State likes to do, run, make runs through the middle with Bentley and Dolling and try to lay it onto them. Haven't been successful at connecting with them yet, though. Well, and this Crusaders team saw a lot of that early in that last meeting between these two teams. 
that 2-0 lead early, but the thing was was that they made some big adjustments in that game after that, and perhaps the Heat played a role too. Complete opposite kind of game with heat and humidity down there in Missouri, and what you saw there was a 1-1 score the rest of that game, so that was something to note. Yeah, it was Missouri State a 3-1 final as Valpo gets called for a foul here back on September 18th in Springfield. Wilkin and Jones scoring for Missouri State inside of 10 minutes to give them the early 2-0 lead. Cushing pulled one back for Valpo in the 33rd minute, but Matt Bentley with what was at that point his first goal of the season, and in the last match he came off the bench for Missouri State, had the goal which put the game away at 3-1 in that contest. It was the first Valley game of the year for both teams, and it's been a bunch played since, and we're nearing the end of the regular season, and you can tell it as we near November, you can, the weather has definitely turned to fall slash winter. I feel like it's more on the winter side of things today than anything else. There were reports of uh, snowfall in the Chicago area this morning. How about that this early in the season? Nice header from Wagaman to get the ball up into the Valpo attacking half. Good pressure there from Ryan Madondo forces Missouri State to put it out for a Valpo throw and you know Valpo's done a good job you know they came out and the they didn't want to play defensive today they wanted to make sure they were strong defensively but they wanted to come out and play soccer and you know try to win this game not not be intimidated by the number nine next to Missouri State's name and so far through 17 minutes or so of this contest they've been pretty successful. Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that because one of my favorite quotes or sayings from Mike Avery yesterday was that he said that I, ho I told the team that if you go out and win the game, you get the national headlines for ending their streak, and then if Missouri State wins, it's just another game they're supposed to win, so there's no pressure on us in this game. It essentially was what he was saying. Don't put extra pressure on yourselves, and I like that quote. Yeah, Mike Avery. His 13th season at the head of Valpo. A lot of experience playing nationally ranked foes. In fact, since 2013, Valpo with five wins and a draw against top 25 teams. So, in number nine, Missouri State, the highest ranked team they've played since they played at number seven, Michigan State, in September of 2014. A game they won one nothing up in East Lansing. Really impressive win in that game, too. I mean, it was one that... The Crusaders really just hung tough and did exactly what they had to do to win the game, playing really sound, fundamental soccer, not turning the ball over, keeping possession, playing good defense. Brooks on the throw in the attacking third for Valpo here, tries a long throw into the box, and foul will be called a little too aggressive there from one of the Valpo attackers in the box and gets whistled for the infraction. Yeah, and that time, I mean, it, it really was at a disadvantage for him on the Valpo side to try to retrieve that ball. He was out number three to one that time, and it just makes it hard for you to really make any kind of play. I believe that was Madondo they were trying to get the ball to there, and understandably so with what he's been able to do as of late. He's been able to put a lot of shots on goal for this team, and it's only a matter of time you get the feeling until perhaps he's able to net one here in a pivotal moment. Again, a ball down the left flank, trying to play through Madondo there. He knocks it ahead. Foot race for the ball. Madondo, did he get to it before the end line? He did. Great individual effort there from Ryan Madondo, chasing down the ball. Connor Langan puts it out off him for a corner kick. Madondo a bit slow to get up there in the corner as he landed on the track, but it's now jogging back toward the box, and Adon Garcia lines up for Valpo's second corner of the game. That's a real great play that time, a veteran play by Ryan Madondo. Going over there, knowing the situation, Aaron, and getting the corner kick, drawing it off balance off the defender from Missouri State. Beautiful play. Garcia ready over the ball in the corner. Now takes it in swinger. Ball ricochets around, goes out for a goal kick. Just a little pinball action there, and you know not much you can do if you're Valpo, one of the attackers, when it gets... Punch out right into you. A lot of traffic in there that time and not a lot of room to get that ball towards the net. Missouri State doing a nice job closing up the gap there, and that's what they do on the inside routinely that makes it so hard on opposing offenses. Yeah, so strong. You know, if you rank in the top ten in the nation, both scoring offense and scoring defense, 
you have to be pretty strong in front of goal on both ends, and this Bears squad definitely is strong on both accounts. Yeah, 31 goals scored coming into this game. I mean, that's an average of almost two and a half goals per match. And when you're only giving up less than a half goal, I mean, that's a good win differential for your team. It's a big statement to why they're where they're at. Bruce F. down the right side. Lost possession. He was claiming a corner kick and did not get the call to go in his favor. It'll be a goal kick for Hulse and still a little confusion. Missouri State players trying to sell the fact it went off the Valpo defender, but both uh, Michael or Nicholas Balser and Carlos Leva having nothing of that. Well, and the ball was already out of bounds at that point. He was just being sure and trying to play the situation that time on the Valpo side, but it didn't really matter. Battle in the midfield won by Missouri State. Let's see. Throw it in the back four. Now Denton in the midfield gives it back to left back Greg Stratton. Stratton playing against Valpo for the first time this year. In fact, the only matchup, the only match he's missed all year was the first matchup with the Crusaders in Springfield back on September 18th. As Missouri State wins a throw in their attacking third. Stratton, one of the Missouri Valley Conference Defensive Players of the Week on this team that we mentioned as well. That was week seven of the season. Just one of many that have been so sensational this year. Ball goes out to Valpo. As, you know, they've done a good job not allowing Missouri State to get dangerous chances so far. In fact, you know we're 22 minutes into this game. Benign shot totals on both sides. Three for Valpo, two for Missouri State. One apiece on goal. You know, it's, it's been a matter of, I think, still trying to feel things out, see what you can do. And, you know, when it's been a month and a half since you played each other last, obviously both teams made adjustments. And so far, the Valpo defense and what Mike Avery's done with the formation today to counteract the ability of the two strikers is working out pretty well. It really is. I mean, I like what I've seen from this Crusader side. They've really done a nice job neutralizing and... Really, I, I think preventing any big offensive opportunities thus far. The game has kind of been played a lot in neutral parts of the field, and that's something important to note so far in this first half. And I think it says something. I don't think I've called Chris Villalobos' name yet, kind of playing in that sweeper role behind the back four today, making sure that Josh Dowling doesn't get off. Quick restart from Missouri State. Brooks got a foot on it, now Valpo nods it out. DeMar Rose runs it down at midfield. Good job again. Missouri State tried to take advantage of a foul around midfield and restart quickly, but Valpo was up to the test. And you mentioned Chris Villalobos. He's really been a staple on this team. He doesn't have the most gaudy stat numbers offensively throughout his career, but he's just been such an integral part with the intangibles for this team and just being an emotional leader for them. And that's been something that... Coach Avery as well has really noticed and take, taken note of throughout his career. Bruce Seth looked to get it to Dowling. That time Brooks was there for Valpo. It'll be a corner kick as Brooks has knocked it off over the end line. It appears Jack Denton will be the bear to go down to the near corner to deliver this. And you got to be careful on set pieces against this squad with their strikers and their ability to score. Yeah, Josh Dowling that time getting out in front and just getting a little tangled up. It was a good non-call in terms of any kind of foul on that play. Denton's corner, and I don't know if it's because of the wind today or what, but typically when you take a corner kick, you want to make sure it stays in play, at least until it gets to the box. You don't want to, uh, you don't want to kick it out over the end line when it gets called out of bounds. And yeah, that was kind of an uncharacteristic one that time. It just sailed over everything. I don't know if he just obviously misfired the ball a little bit, got under it a little bit more than normal, and it just sailed on him. A little too much arc on the outswinger there. Goes for a goal kick for Valpo. Stroud wins the first header. Possession still up for grabs off the goal kick. Run down over there by Mason Marcy for Valpo. Yeah, that was a dangerous pass he just did back to one of his backs that time. Dowling was right there and just missed the ball by a hair. Cushing a ball into the box, and Creek comes up and gathers it in and quickly gets it back on the turf. And 
long ball ahead here looking for the run of Dowling, but Chavez Brooks back to make sure he doesn't get a free look on goal. Missouri State possessing now in the midfield, kicking it around the back four. This is lying in on the near side to Bruseth. Bruseth gets, oh, well, wins a throw in. It looked like it might have been a foul on Wagaman down there, but. Definitely looked like a little contact there, maybe a light shove, but nonetheless, he'll get a throw in. The ball was already out of bounds. Valpo wins it to Marrows out wide again now. Madondo as they've been trying to exploit this left flank, and Garcia now on the run with it down the left side. Garcia with Madondo gives it back to him. Now to the left back, Dylan Wagaman looking for a ball into the box there. Michael Cushing unable to get to it, and he'll go out for a Missouri State goal kick. Yeah, nothing much happening on that possession. Crusaders trying to make the most of it in the midfield, but there just really wasn't anything there. All they had was players uh, in the middle of the field. Just not really a good look offensively that time, but or a high percentage one. But still, Crusaders look like they might get it back here. Cushing on the far side. Looking for Garcia. Can't get it to him. Missouri State cleans up back there. Kyle Hebert. I haven't called his name really so far today, but out there at left back, gathered it in in one possession back for the Bears. And he's been one of their captains on defense over his tenure here, and he just is a sensational defensive player, one of the big reasons that they've been so strong as of late. Bentley with room to run here for Missouri State now goes out wide left. Little chip ahead for Wilkin. Wilkin trying to cross before it gets to the end line. He is unable to ball out for a Valpo goal kick, and it appears we'll have our first substitution of the match as Missouri State brings on 17, Ian Jones. Ian Jones, a senior out of Alton, Illinois. Um, one of three of the goals that were scored against Valpo the last time these two teams met in that Missouri, Missouri State 3-1 to one victory. He actually had the match winner in that match, one of two match winners for him in MVC play this year. This is his First appearance off the bench in the last six. He had started their last five matches, but played just 22 minutes last time out. Obviously is healthy if he's getting called upon here, 28 minutes into the game. Maybe a little spark offensively off the bench as we hit the final third of the first half. Yeah, this first half has really gone by fast, hasn't it? These two teams playing kind of a fluid game, not a lot of stoppages, and uh, just kind of starting to pick up the pace a little bit. There was some room to run there for Jones and his first touch on the ball and Valpo making sure he doesn't get out too far. Kind of a tactical foul there, make sure Missouri State doesn't get out on the break. A little talking to from Nicholas Balser, our head referee, but no card at a shoot. That was a really good foul that time too because they had numbers down the field that time and they were going to have a good transition look offensively. Holds the ball up to midfield. Taken by Missouri State. Ben Stroud there to win it for the Bears. Missouri State looks to use the left side here. So knocking the ball around, looking for an avenue to go in. Now a long ball up, looking for Jones. Wagaman again there to win the header. Dylan Wagaman's been pretty good today. And now Valpo breaking forward as Garcia running down the left. Garcia pulls it back onto his right foot. He'll try his luck from 15 yards out. Nice save there by Michael Creek. Not a real difficult save, but still on a wet day like this, you never know how that ball is going to bounce. And you never know how your footing's going to be, too, when you try to launch to make that diving save, too. I thought that was a real exceptional touch that time from Adon Garcia. Um, and now as we see a player down for Missouri State, looks like he's a little slow to get up. And that'll be a yellow card for Adon Garcia, and that's huge for Valpo, not necessarily in terms of this match, but for the next match against Evansville. That's Garcia's fifth yellow card of the season, and I think there's argument here that, you know, he's being booked for persistent infringement. Okay, now it's not against Garcia. They wow. hand the yellow card instead to DeMar Rose. A little confusion there. 
He's... Yeah, we're going to see on the replay here. There comes Garcia in there, incidental contact, but he was the one that was involved in the play. You see yeah. there That's... getting tripped up, but, I mean, somehow, I don't know. I don't know. It's not often you see a yellow card issued and then taken back. I didn't. Even, I I, I've almost never seen that, and honestly, that was kind of a strange sequence there, really, because it was just an incidental trip. It was not anything that was really blatant. And it seemed like the uh, Nicholas Balser was pointing as if it were persistent infringement, like um, that Garcia had committed a number of fouls, but then, you know, the card gets given to Rose, who has committed one or two, but he definitely didn't commit that one. Nonetheless, the yellow card to Rose as Missouri State restarts. Dahling along the ground, saved, but the rebound put home by the Bears. That was and a really nice And he's ruled too. offside. Ruled offside. Wow. Near line judge has the flag up. Well, you'll see here the ball comes in. Dowling gets a really good look at this. You'll see off that touch. And then a nice job by Holst to try to save it. And then coming in, I believe it was Bentley. And he can't believe that he was called for offsides there. It was really close. Yeah, nice initial save by Holst. But as we said on the other end with Creek, you know, the wet soccer ball, if you can't corral it, you're going to give up. Dangerous rebound opportunities. Luckily for Valpo, the offside call negates what would have been a go-ahead goal for the Bears. Jones down the right side here for Missouri State. Now gets it to Dolling. Dolling tries to cross it back into the middle. Knocked around briefly and out of danger for now, but Missouri State definitely picking up the pace on the attack. Stuart Wilkin tries to go for Dolling. Dolling falls down. Are they going to award a penalty here? Let's see. There's some talking going on down there. The near side line judge flagged it. High fives for the Bears, so it looks like initial ruling is not in favor of Valparaiso here. It was tough to see there. If we can maybe get a replay to see if Dolling slipped on his own or was tripped up from behind. Well, see there, that was a nice ball to get that in there. It looked like he was tripped up on his own, really. The field is playing a role in this game, as we've talked about. I didn't really see much there to warrant any kind of penalty. There definitely did not appear to be contact on the play. But despite Valpo's arguments, it does not look like the call is going to go their way. It looks like it's going to be a penalty for Missouri State. Tough break that time for the Crusaders, too, because uh, really they've played such a strong defensive half, and this is not the kind of situation, obviously, that you ever want to see, especially against Bentley, who's looking to get his sixth straight game with a goal here. Bentley, their primary penalty kick taker on the year. He's 3-for-3 three three on PKs this year, looking to score for the sixth straight match and give Missouri State the one nothing lead here in the 31st minute. All eyes on Holst here and see what he can do. The whistle goes. Bentley, the run up. Bentley goes lower left. Wow. What a save that time by. I'm not Ed I'm not sure if he got it. I think it might have clipped the post as the throw ensuing throw in goes to Valpo. We look at the replay here. Yeah, we got to see this. Yeah. No, it did clip the post. It was a diving effort, but it was pretty much right on point. So it won't go as a save, but still, you got to like the effort there by Holst diving in there almost cutting off the ball, but in a way it worked out better for the Crusaders as they get the ball back on their side now and avert disaster there. Yeah, a call that maybe shouldn't have gone for Missouri State resulting in PK, but the ensuing PK, Bentley's first miss of the year and four tries from the spot. We, we remain scoreless 31 minutes into this game, but the Bears threatening again. Dolling shot low along the ground, goes out harmlessly left of the goal for a goal kick during that uh, ensuing stoppage after the PK miss, sub for Valpo. Joe Quadio, the sophomore from London, entered the match up front, trying to give Valpo some fresher legs up front. Yeah, and Joe, a sophomore forward out of London, has lived in five different countries. How about that? England, South Africa. He's lived in Dubai, in the UAE, Hong Kong, and now in the U.S. Foul whistled against Missouri State in the midfield. Quick restart out to Quadio. Once again, Valpo looking to go down the left. Quadio 
crosses onto his left foot. Shot from Garcia there, blocked by a Missouri State defender. Valpo retains possession. And now we'll reset. Long ball into the box, but there was no one on the receiving end. And goes out for a goal kick. And that sequence there was really interesting because Quadio did a really nice job keeping that ball on the ground on that pass. It was one in which a lot of players make the mistake, Aaron, of going in the air, trying to cross that ball in there, and it never works out as well. And that time it actually almost got the Crusaders a really good look at the goal. Cole Rainwater into the match for Valpo. The freshman forward up front, so a whole new grouping up front for Valpo here in the final 12 and a half minutes of the first half. Missouri State looks for Ian Jones down the right. He manages to nod it on. Dolling chasing it down for the Bears, possesses, cuts it onto his right foot, looks for the cross into the box, across the box, cleared out of there by the Valpo back line. And now attempting to counter, DeMar Rose looking for Cole Rainwater right off the bench. Good job there by Creek coming well outside his box to sweep it out and avert potential disaster there. Yeah, and that play, I mean, that was almost all DeMar Rose going back there. That was a really nice turn of events, trying to get that ball up the field. And you're just going up against a really great goalkeeper in Michael Creek, and that time able to get out there aggressively to make that stand. Battle in the midfield. Missouri State controls now, and Denton gives it back to the back line. So they try to play out of the back here with 11 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Number nine, Missouri State and Valpo still scoreless here on Brown Field on a cold, wet, windy, rainy, altogether miserable day to be outside. <laughs> but you know what? It's never really a miserable day when you're out there on the field playing. It's just, you know, it's one of those things where it almost leaves your mind once you get into the heat of the game. Andy Lamelli enters the match for Valpo here. He'll replace Cushing for the final 11 minutes of the first half. You know, you mentioned uh, Cole Rainwater, who had just checked into the game for Valpo, one of only three Valpo players to appear in all 14 matches so far this season. Really got a promising future with this club. And not to mention he played under Valpo assistant coach Brendan Roth for three Lions United for three years. Very small world in the world of sports. Missouri State looking to push forward. Now brings it back. Connor Langan on the ball for the Bears. Ian Jones loses it out of bounds on the near side. It'll be a Valpo throw in. And it looked that time like uh, trying to draw the foul on the Missouri State side a little bit. Uh, didn't quite work that time with the officials. It was uh, really kind of questionable to begin with. It was Ian Jones that was trying to draw it. Dolling for the Bears, now in the middle for Wilkin. Wilkin trying to play a quick one-two. Now Wilkin gets it back. Wilkin, nice play there in the back by Villalobos to break up the run. And now Valpo looking to counter, and once again, out wide left, really exploiting out there, Coadio. Coadio cut off from getting toward the end line. We'll give it back to Rose. Now a bad touch from Baird's defender puts it out for a Valpo throw right near the corner flag. Chance here for Valpo in the attacking zone as the clock ticks down toward about nine minutes to play in this first half. And I mean, from what we've seen so far, if you're head coach Mike Avery, I mean, you've got to like overall what you've seen in this game because really that penalty kick was the best opportunity we've seen so far. Ball punched out there by Creek. And that never really should have been a penalty kick in the first place. Eaten with it for Valpo, but gets it knocked well up in the air, and Valpo will reset back in the back. Now Quadio, so they look to push four, looking for the nice run touch. between lines. Not quite there. Just off as Quadio fed Rainwater through the, through the middle there. Couldn't quite make the connection. Oh, man, and that's one that Rainwater wants to have back big time. As he was coasting in there, Aaron, he lost his footing. You know, we mentioned the field being soggy, and that played a huge role in that play, not going for a better look. Foul against the Bears in the midfield via Valpo free kick. So we take a look at the 
the last effort, the Quadio. I mean, this is just a brilliant touch and pass right there. Perfect ball, and you see that one little extra stride. He lost his footing there, looked a little awkward on the knee, and uh, unable to get anything out of it as a result. But I think on a normal day, you might have a good shot on goal right there from Rainwater. Yeah, regardless of the result, you have to like the play off the bench of Quadio, like feeding that ball between the Missouri State center backs. You know, the, this is a defensive group that's so strong, give up, gives up so few goals to create a quality scoring chance like that. And you just saw the graphic, each team with two saves on the game. That's a real testament on the Crusaders' side, what they've been able to do defensively in this game because they've put a lot of pressure on Ed Van Holst in the season forcing uh, him and other Valpo goalkeepers to get 76 saves on the year, which leads the conference by almost 30 to the second-placed Evansville at 48. Valpo throw here in the attacking third. Jackie in, will take it for Valpo. The long run up, throw into the box, battle in the box. Missouri State clears it away as the clock ticks towards seven minutes remaining in the first half of play. Valpo now on the far side of the field. DeMar Rose, and I'm not really sure what he wanted to do with that one, but I'm guessing it wasn't knock it off the football crossbar. <laughs> little, That's a good guess. A little miss kick here on the, the wet day here at Brown Field, and goes for a Missouri State goal kick. Yeah, I don't think there's uh, enough room in this field for a Cody Parkey kind of situation, you know, in a soccer match. Rose with it back, trying to get something going for Valpo here late in the first half. Ball down the right for Marcy, taken away by Stratton. And now Missouri State looks to push forward. Nice job getting back by Dybala there to break up the Missouri State attack, but the Bears regain possession. They'll have a throw following a couple substitutions here. Couple cameos here late in the first half with six minutes to go. Number 16, Hugo Johnson enters, as well as number 26, Dawson Lee. Yeah, and head coach John Leamy on the Bears side of things, really doing a nice job mixing up these lineups, getting a lot of players involved throughout the season, really as integral parts of this team. It's, it's a nice job spreading the wealth, if you will. Started as the Bears head coach back in 1992. How about that? 27 years as their head coach, making him the longest tenured men's soccer head coach in the program's history. Missouri State wins a corner kick off the deep throw. Valpo forced to knock it out across the goal line, and now it'll be looks like Jack Denton coming up and taking the corner. A quick quarter from Denton. Looks for Stuart Wilkin. Wilkin into the box and knocked away by a Valpo defender for another corner kick. Yeah, and you're starting to see a little bit of signs of frustration for this Bears offense right now because they just aren't really finding the looks that they usually would be able to get by this point in the first half. And we'll see what they do here, but uh, frustration may be setting in a little bit. Denton's corner headed away by Villalobos. Denton will run onto it on the far side with 440 to go here in the first half. Try to cross into the box. Cleared momentarily, but brought down by Jones. Now out wide, this is off the bench. Johnson trying to cross it in. Earns the throw in deep in Valpo territory. Well, the the Bears, no stranger to these kinds of winning streaks, too, that they've had throughout this uh, last couple seasons. Last year, as a matter of fact, the third longest winning streak in the country and first top 25 ranking since 09 for them. And now this year, just repeating more so once again with another long streak. It's interesting. If you get this game to half scoreless, you look over half of their goals this year have come in the first half, 16 of their 28 goals in regulation have come in the opening 45 minutes, but we're still scoreless here. Nil-nil here on Brownfield between number nine Missouri State and Valpo with three and a half minutes to go in the first half of play. Missouri State ball in the back, long ball forward looking for Dahling, 
Brooks once again. Brooks and Villalobos have done a good job back there so far today, limiting the opportunities for the Bears. Well, the other thing you mentioned to go along with that, Missouri State has only given up one goal all season after halftime. Between the second half and overtime play, they've only given up one goal. Yeah, the defense gets stronger as the game goes on. I mean, obviously they haven't given up many in the first half either, but well, I mean, that's but very, you get the very... five to one disparity. I mean, it does say something about what they've been able to do down the stretch of these games. So if you are the Crusaders, you do want to at least try to come away with something in this half, but I think it is a victory if you can go in the halftime scoreless too. Long ball forward looking for Rainwater. Not able to be chased down before it goes out for a Missouri State throw. With two and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Missouri State, of course, looking to clinch the outright MVC regular season title today. Would be their fourth regular season title in the last seven years. Valpo coming off a loss at Bradley last time out. Looking to win their second of their last three matches. In their first match here at Brownfield in almost a month. And that was a game that was really winnable for the Crusaders. They had a number of missed opportunities, and we mentioned Ryan Madondo had three shots, all of them on goal in that game. And really, the numbers don't lie normally, but in that game, it really looked like a game that they should have won. Battle on the far side for possession. It looks like a foul will be called. On Missouri State here, Valpo a potentially dangerous opportunity in the final 90 seconds of the opening half. Yeah, there was a lot of contact and jawing going on over there on the far sideline. And, you know, they're always jockeying for position, trying to get control of the ball, but that time a little too much of that before the ball even got in there, and that's what drew that call. Looks like Mason Marcy might be the one to take the free kick for Valpo as the wall gets set. We get ready for the set piece. We haven't touched too much on him so far. He's Valpo's leading goal scorer. Header by Dylan Wagaman. It's a goal. Wow. Dylan Wagaman heads home the free kick from Mason Marcy. one nothing Valpo. Wow, that was some ball all the way, that free kick from the far sideline, and then Wagaman in perfect position that time to head that thing directly in. I mean, that could not have been any more perfect that time at all. Basically on the stroke of halftime, just 65 seconds left in the first half. Great free kick. Great shot by Wagaman getting off his man and getting free enough to head it home. We mentioned Dylan Wagaman had not appeared in the last three Valley matches. Good insertion into the lineup today for his defensive prowess, but also his ability on set pieces in the box. You just never know, Aaron, and that time that was a really, I mean, that ball was just incredible, that free kick from the sideline there, and Wagaman took full advantage that time. The redshirt senior defender out of Houston, Texas that time. They're going to be proud of that one. Josh Doling on the ball. Valpo wins it, and then Doling commits the foul. Will it be a yellow card for Doling? It appears it will be. As I said, that frustration really mounting, I think, on the Missouri State side, and when you get frustrated like that out there, especially with these playing conditions, it is easy to start making those kinds of errors. Let's see this again now. Takes that touch, and then as he loses it, that contact, and it looks like they might have seen his arm swing out there, his left arm. I think that's where they got the call. A little discussion here between Nicholas Balser, the head referee, and John Leamy from Missouri State after the booking with 47 seconds to go. So you said let's try to – Valpo needs to try to get something late in the half because Missouri State's second half defense has been so strong. And just like that, the Marcy to Wagaman connection has Valpo with the one-goal lead here late in the first half. Wagaman transferring into this program here in Valpo from Oregon State where he played his first two seasons before coming here. He's – and I've got two goals on the year on 10 shots, but out of those 10 shots, eight of them have been on point, on goal. 11 appearances this season. Inside of 30 seconds, ball up in the air. One by Jones for Missouri State, but Brooks there to take the second ball. Possession finally obtained by Missouri State in the final seconds here in the first half as they push forward, hoping for a last-second goal here late in the period. Via Lobos won't have any of that. Valpo... Looking to counter here in the final seconds, but 
won't have anything doing, but I think the 